Hi there, it's Marzena. And it's Mermaid. If you are not familiar with what Mermaid is, it is a one month in a year, it's May of course, when artists all around the world concentrate their work on Mermaid pieces. They are creating Mermaid drawings, sketches, paintings, Mermaid sculptures, Mermaid cakes, you name it. So, for the first time, I decided to join this big event and create my own little sea creature. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get to work. Or should I say, and it will fit great this time, let's dive in. So at first it appears kind of obvious that Laguna Blue will be the best choice for the base. She already has a water creature features. But I wanted this doll to be more of a creepy kind of mermaid. Like something from the deep. And her face was too childlike and cute. So, Spectra, I choose you. I started with doll's preparation. First, I cut the hair short and sunk the head in boiling water for about one minute. It will soften the vinyl and melt the glue inside the head. I carefully removed the head from the body and scrubbed the hell out of it. After removing all the glue and the hair plugs, I wiped the head clean with an acetone. Then, of course, I shrunk the head. I am addicted to this process. I'm reattaching the head to the body before it dries completely, so I don't have to wider the neck hole. I am so sorry for the lighting on this video. I hate my working conditions here. I promise though, it will get better. I thought about cutting her original ears off, but I realized that it won't be necessary. The new ears will be covering them anyway. I made some wire reinforcements. Time for the epoxy. I am using gloves only during the mixing process, because it is when the epoxy sculpt is the most toxic. After that I am removing the gloves. It is still safer to work in them, but I just hate it. I sculpted the ears using my fingers, water and sculpting tools. I find water essential for sculpting in epoxy. It makes it less sticky and helps with smoothing the edges. With wet cotton swab, I removed all of my fingerprints. Worked as a charm. I let the epoxy dry overnight and in the next morning, I sanded it down with a nail buffer, just to give it some tooth that will help the paint coat adhere. I also sanded down the plastic seams, panties and markings on the doll's body. Then I wiped her clean with non-acetone nail polish remover. The acetone is safe on a vinyl head, but it could melt the plastic body. With a tiny milling cutter, I gave her a slightly opened mouth. After that, I gave her nice soapy bath to wash all the dust and acetone residues. Here she is, all wrapped up like a burrito and ready for her MSC spraying. It is very toxic, so always use mask and spray it outside. Oh. I forgot to paint the ears before spraying, no biggie.
Ok, now we got it. Three layers of Mr. Super Clear and she is ready for her face up. As always, I started with blushing and shading the face with soft pastels. I gave her teeny tiny veins on her forehead and temples. I marked the eyes with brown watercolor pencil. This is like second face up that I felt pretty confident doing. I didn't make too many mistakes, so I think that I'm slowly getting a hold of it. I sprayed the face a few times with MSC during the process to seal the progress and give the pigment another layer to grab on. So whenever you feel like your colors are not building up anymore or you just like where the face up is going and you are afraid of ruining it, just give your doll another MSC layer, wait 20 to 30 minutes and go back to work. I wanted to give her eyes an inhuman vibe. But I didn't want to paint them all black like I did with my bone and tooth fairies. I decided to add some tiny scales on her temples. Finally, I could switch to acrylic paints.
Let's give this fishy some teeth. And of course, a little bit of my crazy highlights, but not too much. And the face up is done. I rubbed her head like a candy and started with the body modifications. I bent her spine a little bit by cutting her torso in half, repositioning it and reattaching it with a wire and a hot glue. Oh, I also ripped off her legs, because she won't be needing them anymore. <laughs> I sanded down the rough edges. Then drilled the holes in her um, knees. I glued two wires in the holes and bent one around the other, leaving the ends split. It will be the core for the tail and fins. I glued the legs in place, but I left the arms uh, movable, just for now. Alright, back to the tail. First, I created the base shape from Warblast Black Art Scraps. You need to be very careful while working with thermoplastics. It gets really hot and you can burn yourself easily. I am already used to blisters on my hands. When the base was done, I created the main fins from piece of Warblast Pearly Art. I heated it up and shaped as I wanted. On one side of the fin, I left some excess wire as a stand attachment.
I covered the tail base with long rectangle piece of warbler. I am using warbler pearly art as fins and the other layer because it is the smoothest warbler you can get. Warbler black art is smoother than warbler's finest art and pearly art is smoother than black art. It still has some texture, but it's okay. I drilled the holes for some additional fins. Then glued the wire inside. And finally I added the fins from Warbler. Many, many fins. I like it. it, looks pretty organic. Time to fill the gaps with epoxy skull. I also covered the transition between Warbler's tail and the plastic torso. I knew that making scales will be a pain in the butt, but I wanted to try it anyway. I've never done it before, so I needed to figure out the best way to do them. The first one, failure. But finally I found a technique that works for me. And five or six hours later, done. It was time to glue the arms in place and cover the joints. I wanted to sculpt some arm fans, but it looked like crap. Let's pretend it never happened and call the epoxy part finished. Sculpting the gills was also a bummer, so instead I just curved them in the plastic. I sanded everything down with a nail buffer. I didn't give up on those arm fins, but instead of epoxy I used warbler. Not perfect, but good enough. I covered everything with light creamy acrylic paint. And of course, let's not forget about body blushing and about shading the tail. I used soft pastels and a smidge of paint just on the fins ends. I made those ends a little bit pinkish orange or orange pink, just to match the blushing on her face.
I filled the gills with black and red. And added a little bit of highlight. From air drying clay I prepared some dead coral pieces. And I attached them to the stand along with the doll. The changed scenery is not my new workshop, unfortunately. It is my family house which we were looking after while my parents were on vacation. So it was even smaller and more temporary workspace. Yay! I made the borders with a silver tape just because I didn't have my cardboard with me. And I used my favorite doll scent technique. You know it, the kitty litter and the wood glue. Next morning I could remove the tape, sanded down the edges and painted everything with acrylics. I also gave the corals some soft pastel shading. Because the doll is so tall, she's over 60 centimeters, which is like 24 inches, I needed to rotate my camera. Sorry. From the start I wanted to give her a long black hair, longer synthetic hair at the bottom and more possible yarn wefts on top. And then my sister came and said that white hair will suit her better, cause there's no black stuff going on on her body. And she had a point. So I tried to add some black patterns to the tail, cause I already had black hair prepared. Painting her scales black was a disaster. So I tried to add some patterns on the fence. First try? Nope. Second one? Trash it. I ended up making simple stripes and they were okay. I started to apply the hair, but halfway through I noticed that nylon and yarn have completely different texture and didn't look that good together. So I removed majority of the nylon ones, leaving only a few strands on the hairline. It was the floating in the water effect that I wanted the most, so I sacrificed length so I could stylize the hair easier. And that was the moment when I started to have a nervous breakdown. Cause I realized that because of those ugly black stripes on her fence, I do not like this doll anymore. So I gave up on the black hair and followed my sister's and my husband's suggestions. I repainted and reshaded the fence. I used Liquitex gloss varnish to add some wetness to her eyes, lips and tail. And of course I created new hair wefts for her, creamy white with pinkish ombre effect, matching the fence. You may be wondering why I needed the nylon hair at all. 
Well, you can't get a very long weft with yarn due to the length of its actual fibers. One thing left to do was to stylize the hair to give them this floating in the water feeling. And finally, she was done. So here she is, my very first mermaid. She's not completely what I imagined, but maybe it's good. She is different from my other dolls. While with black hair, she would look similar to my dark valentine. She looked creepier with the black ones, in my opinion. But with lighter ones, she managed to keep this deep sea creature vibe that I was going for. Who knows? Maybe next year I will create a black-haired siren with a dark tail this time. Or a bold siren. This one looked pretty good without any hair as well. And what do you think? I would love to read your opinions in a comment section down below. I will be creating one more mermaid, but I will try to make her cute this time. So if you like cuter stuff more than creepy, there will be a treat for you. If you do like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button to get notifications about my future projects. You can also share my work with anyone who likes dolls, art, mermaids, creepy stuff or crafting in general. Thank you all for watching and see you soon! Nie mogę nad tobą pracować, ale no, się. Tak na mnie leży.